Who would win a fight between an alligator and a crocodile? Ever wondered what would happen if a massive alligator and a huge crocodile finally squared off? Who would win that ultimate swamp showdown? It's a classic question that gets everyone talking. These two reptiles both have armored bodies, terrifying teeth, and a mean reputation. But they're not exactly the same animal. Which one packs the bigger punch? The suspense is real, and by the end of this deep dive, you'll see the answer clearly. The Saltwater Crocodile Meet the saltwater crocodile, often called the salty. These monsters are the biggest living reptiles on Earth. A full-grown male saltwater croc can reach about 20 to 23 feet, 6 to 7 meters in length, and can weigh over a ton, about a thousand plus kilograms. This beast has over 60 massive teeth and a jaw designed for one thing, crushing. In fact, the saltwater croc's bite is nothing short of legendary. Scientists measured its bite force at roughly 3,700 psi, the highest of any animal on the planet. That's enough force to snap large bones like toothpicks or even crush a small car. These crocodiles patrol rivers, estuaries, and coastal waters across Southeast Asia and Northern Australia. They're true ambush predators, often lurking with just eyes and nostrils above the water. When prey or a rival croc comes close, they explode forward with their huge tails, grab the victim, and clamp down. If the salty sinks its teeth in, it can twist its head and perform a death roll, a violent spin that tears flesh and crushes bones. After one good spin, even a deer or wild boar becomes minced meat. They've been known to take on water buffalo and even sharks, thanks to those powerful jaws and death rolls. Defensively, saltwater crocs have built-in armor. Their skin is covered in thick, bony plates, called osteoderms, and scoots, making them very hard to bite through. Their bodies are so tough that very few wild animals even try to attack an adult croc. And when they do, it's usually another croc. The biggest weakness of a salty is on land. Despite their bulk, they're surprisingly fast for short bursts, up to about 15 to 22 miles per hour, 24 to 35 kilometers per hour on land. But they fatigue quickly and can't sustain a chase. Plus, if flipped onto its back, a croc has a vulnerable soft belly. Still in the water where it belongs, the saltwater crocodile is basically unstoppable. Its combination of size, muscle, and bite power truly makes it the heavyweight champion of the wetlands. The American Alligator Now let's look at the American Alligator. These freshwater fighters rule the swamps and rivers of the southeastern United States. An adult male alligator can grow up to 13 to 15 feet long, around 4 meters, and weigh roughly 500 to 1,000 pounds, 226 to 453 kilograms. Females stay smaller, so when we imagine a one-on-one -on -one fight, we typically mean a big male alligator. Alligators look a bit like their crocodile cousins, but they have a wider U-shaped snout and more of their teeth hidden when their jaws are closed. They are powerful killers in their own right. An alligator's bite can reach about 2,000 psi, strong enough to crack open a turtle shell. Alligators use a few clever methods to take down prey. They often ambush from the water's edge, suddenly lunging and clamping their jaws on a victim, which could be fish, birds, deer, or even wild boar. Once they bite, they might drag the prey into deep water and drown it. They also famously perform the death roll, grabbing a limb or neck and spinning rapidly to tear flesh. Between the jaws and the roll, a gator can dismember large animals, even dismember parts of creatures as big as bears or deer. The alligator's body is like nature's version of steel plating. It has rows of thick bony scales running along its back. These serve as armor against attacks. Alligators also have a nifty bone ridge in their upper jaw, acting like a visor to protect their eyes and nose. 
On land, alligators are surprisingly spry. They can lunge at about 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour for a few seconds, enough to outrun a human easily. In water, they swim quickly too, up to about 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, using that strong tail like a marine jet. One more secret weapon. When agitated, alligators produce a loud bellow or hiss to intimidate rivals. Compared to crocodiles, alligators are usually a bit less aggressive to humans. They often back off unless provoked. But in a fight with another big predator, an alligator is fearless. They also know how to survive injuries. Wild fighting males sometimes emerge with missing limbs or blinded eyes after clashes for territory or mates, so they can keep fighting even when hurt. In short, this is one tough, heavily armed reptile. Teeth, jaws, and armor. Now let's line them up weapon to weapon. First, teeth and jaws. The saltwater croc's jaws are like steel jaws on massive hydraulics. Up to 3,700 PSI means any crunch from that bite can snap bones like twigs. The crocodile has about 64 to 68 long pointed teeth arranged in an interlocking pattern. These teeth are conical and razor sharp. When the croc bites, it locks its upper and lower jaws together with its special hinge, making it nearly impossible for prey or an alligator to pull free. The alligator's jaw isn't far behind. Alligators have about 74 teeth and a super strong palate. Their teeth are slightly shorter and stubbier than a croc's, which helps them crush things. An alligator's bite, around 2,000 PSI, can crack turtle shells and crush bone. However, an alligator's teeth are mostly hidden when its mouth is closed. That means when the mouth is shut, you can't see them. But once it chomps down, those hidden teeth emerge and clamp on anything in between. Both reptiles can lock onto an opponent's body part. If a croc or alligator gets hold of the other's leg or tail, neither will let go easily. The saltwater croc's superior size and higher bite force gives it the initial edge in a jaw lock. If a croc bites the alligator first and the jaws clamp tight, it could snap the gator's spine before the alligator even knew what hit it. The alligator would have to bite back quickly, aiming for a vulnerable spot like the croc's neck or snout. Next, armor and tough spots. Both creatures have very tough skin covered with keratin and bony scales. Think biological chainmail. The backs of both animals are heavily armored, so a snap from one side doesn't easily pierce the other. Neither one wants to get bite marks in the head. If either reptile gets grabbed by a limb, it will likely use its strong tail to lash out. A whisk of an alligator's tail can knock an enemy off balance. A crocodile's tail can do the same, though crocs tend to have heavier, stronger tails. Finally, strength and speed. On land, alligators are generally faster than crocs. They can burst at about 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour for short sprints, while saltwater crocs top out around 15 to 22 miles per hour, 24 to 35 kilometers per hour. In open space, an alligator could easily outrun a croc. In water, the alligator also edges the croc in sprint speed thanks to its slightly more streamlined body. However, the croc's sheer bulk means it carries more momentum and strength in the water once moving. In terms of muscle power, the croc probably wins. Its entire body is built for brute force. Those powerful leg muscles let it lunge far and high out of the water. In fact, saltwater crocs can leap almost half their body length vertically out of the water when attacking. An alligator can jump too, but not as explosively. Crocodiles are usually more aggressive and territorial than alligators. When an alligator gets startled, it might back off. A saltwater croc will often hold its ground and fight. That mentality itself is a kind of weapon. Battle Scenario Land versus Water Let's imagine a fight and see how the environment tips the scales. On land, the alligator is likely to have the advantage. 
Its agility and higher running speed mean it could circle or dodge the slower croc. If a cornered alligator wanted to escape, it could turn tail and outrun the croc for a short distance. But in a fight, those short bursts might allow the gator to unleash quick bites on the croc's legs or snout, then retreat. Meanwhile, the croc, heavy and over a ton, cannot pursue as fast and tie as quickly. If the croc manages to get a hold of the alligator's tail, it could try to drag it, but the alligator could coil and snap back. In water, however, including deep pond water on land, it's a different story. This is croc territory. The saltwater croc can stay submerged for long periods and doesn't mind salt or brackish water. If the fight happens in a river or muddy lake, the croc's size and ambush tactics shine. A croc could submerge nearly completely and then explode upward or sideways with a massive bite. An alligator underwater is still a formidable swimmer, but the croc's greater mass means it could drag the gator more easily. If the croc wraps its jaws around the gator and rolls, that death roll could quickly turn the tide. The alligator's best move would be to get hold of the croc's snout or eyes and try to shake free or dislodge itself. If they manage to lock jaws jaw to jaw, it could be a tug of war of strength. The croc being bigger, would likely overpower the gator. The longer teeth of the croc would be more likely to secure a firm grip on the alligator's tough skin. On the other hand, if an alligator managed to clamp onto the croc's softer underthroat, it might try biting through vital areas. Either way, once a death roll starts, one animal often ends up torn or disoriented. Both have very strong neck muscles, so getting a good bite in a vulnerable spot is hard. It might come down to who tires first. Who has the edge? Putting it all together, who would come out on top? The facts line up mostly on the crocodile's side. On paper, the saltwater croc is bigger, heavier, and stronger than the alligator. The size difference means much more bite force and body weight. Crocodiles also tend to be more aggressive attackers, whereas alligators often back off if unsure. In a straight fight, I would say the crocodile would win roughly 9 times out of 10. Nevertheless, the alligator should not be underestimated. In certain conditions, a feisty gator could turn the tables. For example, if they somehow dueled on dry, open land, the alligator speed could allow it to dodge the croc's lunges and deliver surprise bites. If the alligator got the croc on a slippery shoreline, it might even flip the croc onto its back. And a croc's belly is one of its few soft spots. But even a flipped croc would quickly try to roll back or twist its head around to snap at the opponent. If the fight is in water, like in a swamp or river, the croc has the clear advantage. The saltwater croc's power and bite would quickly become deadly. Once its jaws clamp, good luck getting out. Those teeth lock on too securely. A crocodile in water can also lash its tail powerfully, pinning an alligator under or dragging it deeper. Plus, the alligator doesn't have the croc's special salt excretions. Salt water would tire the gator out faster. So in that scenario, the crocodile is the favorite by a mile. Even a one-on-one -on -one fight between similarly sized specimens would likely go to the croc. According to her pathologists, even if the two creatures were the same size, the crocodile's keen senses and longer lifespan would almost certainly give it the power it needs to overcome an alligator. Both are smart ambush hunters, but the crocodile's second to none bite and sheer power still win out. In reality, these two beasts prefer to avoid conflict. They're each at the top of their own food chain, with little reason to battle over territory or mates. But if an encounter did happen, the science says, bet on the croc. His arsenal, mammoth size, massive teeth, and killer instinct makes him the likely champion of the swamp ring. The alligator fights hard, but in this battle of the jaws, the crocodile is the heavyweight winner.